guys, it's Trevor coming to you with another video, and today we are going to take a look at a PowerShell module called PSHTML. So PSHTML is basically just a really simple module that allows you to define a static web page by using HTML-like syntax. The only difference is that instead of actually writing the HTML from scratch, you are able to kind of write power, uh, HTML in PowerShell code. So we're going to install this module and then play around with it a little bit and take a look at how to inject some variables into our content. So let's go ahead and start by installing it. So you'll notice that there's a install module command here on the PowerShell gallery page for this particular module. So you can come out to powershellgallery.com, do a quick search for PSHTML, and then call that install module command. Now I'm going to call install module and add the scope current user. And that's going to install the module into my current user directory, which does not require administrative rights on the system. So it'll take just a moment for that module to get installed. And then what we'll do, as with any PowerShell module, is start by exploring the commands that are available in the module by doing get command dash module, and then the name of the module, which is PSHTML. So as you can see here, there are a bunch of common HTML tags defined. So let's go ahead and start building. So we're gonna start with HTML. We'll add the head section and then we will add a body and so on and so forth. So we'll add you know paragraphs and divs and that kind of thing. So over here on the left-hand side of VS Code here, I'm going to start by just typing HTML and then inside the HTML function, we're going to declare this content uh, parameter, uh, only I'm, I'm not specifying the content parameter by name I'm just using it as a positional parameter. So the first the first parameter on HTML is content. And inside of here is where we're going to put the rest of our HTML in the document. So I'll start by adding a head section here. And in the head section, I'll just add a page title. So we'll do the title function for that. And PSHTML is cool. All right, so we have a simple HTML document, a head section, and the title. So if we hit F5 to run this, you'll see if we scroll down here to the bottom of my output window that it generated the HTML code for me. So basically this module is generating an HTML document and then it's exporting it as a string. Now what you do with that string is entirely up to you. Uh, but what you can do is basically just emit it to a local HTML file and then open that in your browser. So let's go ahead and just take the output from the HTML invocation and pipe that into the PowerShell set content command. And so set content is what we use to write a file to the local file system. There's a few other ways to do it as well, but we're just going to use set content for now. And we'll just call this PSHTML Trevor.html. So let's hit F5. And so now we've created that PSHTML dash Trevor, or sorry, yeah, PSHTML dash Trevor.html file. So I'll do get child item PS star. And sure enough, there is the item. Now to open that inside of your web browser, you can use a command, at least in the Windows platform, called invoke item. So invoke item is basically just going to use the default program that's registered with the shell environment to open that file. So I'll do invoke item uh, pshtml dash Trevor. So now if we hit F5, you can see that it actually opens up that document inside of Google Chrome, which is my default web browser. And sure enough, up here we have the title PSHTML5 is, or uh, HTML is cool, uh, pipe Trevor Sullivan. So this seems to be working just fine. So now we can go ahead and add a body section 
in the body, maybe we have a paragraph and in the paragraph, maybe we put, um, you know, bacon. So let's hit F5 again to run that. And sure enough, there's bacon, but it's kind of unstyled, right? It doesn't look very nice. It's just using a default uh, serif based font. It doesn't look very modern and pretty. So what I'm going to do is import <clears throat> a CSS front end library called specter.css. Uh, this is a really simple uh, simple library that I would recommend you, you check out. There's some other popular ones like bootstrap.css, normalized CSS, and things like that. But there's, there's a million and one <clears throat> frameworks out there that you can choose from. So I'm just going to go with this one for now. So I'll head over to the installation documentation. And I could download the style sheet and include it in my project locally. But in this case, I'm actually going to reference the CSS from a content delivery network or CDN. So I'm just going to copy the URL for that framework. And in my head section here, I'll add a link and then the href and then the uh, style or sorry, the type is of style sheet. So let's go ahead and hit F5 and run that. And now you can see that even though we haven't applied any styles, we now have a default uh, nicer text style there that, that uses a, a sans serif font. So now we can start, because we've imported Spectre CSS, we can start using some other components from it. So for example, if you come under elements, you'll look at things like buttons or form elements like input boxes, text areas, that kind of thing. We have some styled elements here. So let's go ahead and just add a button. So if I add a button, I want to make sure I add the button or BTN class to it. There's also a BTN dash primary that will make the button have a filled in look. So in the body section here, I'll add a button and the content will be um, link number one. I'm feeling unoriginal today. And then I can add the class parameter using PowerShell syntax, using dash parameter name, and add the BTN class to it. Now, I don't have to put it in quotes because it's just a, a string there. Uh, but let's add a second button. We'll call this link number two. Actually, let's call it order bacon. And then I'll add a class of button and button dash primary. Now, in this case, because I have two different classes that I'm applying and they're delimited by a space, I need to make sure that I <clears throat> put a single quote or double quote around that. So let's hit F5 again to regenerate this. And now we have a new page here. I'm going to close these old tabs and we've got my bacon text. We have a standard button and then we have a button primary here. So as you can see, we're just very easily building out just a very basic web page here using PowerShell syntax. So that being said, one little workflow enhancement that I would suggest you use is to actually eliminate this invoke item command here. Because as you can see, each time we invoke that HTML file, it's causing Google Chrome to open a new browser tab. So instead, what you may want to consider doing is just leave your PowerShell script like this so it generates an HTML file but then use an auto refresh plugin. And there's a bunch of them out there. I just did a search for uh, refresh on the Chrome web store. And there's a bunch of different plugins out there that you can use for Chrome to just automatically refresh the page on an interval. And so that way you can just basically pin a single browser tab, uh, set that auto refresh extension to just refresh the page every few seconds. And that way you can just kind of alt tab back and forth as you are uh, creating your code and regenerating that file, that HTML file. So uh, make sure that you check out the documentation for PSHTML. There's some other techniques that you can use to ge generate things like bar charts and line charts and pie charts and that kind of thing. I didn't want to get too deep into the weeds in this particular video. I really just wanted to kind of introduce the module and show you really just how easy it is to <clears throat> create HTML pages. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, one other thing I'm actually going to add before we wrap this up is how to inject some content here. 
So from one of my other videos, I talked about Windows performance counters using the get counter command. So I'm just going to hit F8 on this line here and grab the current counter samples. So if we take a look at this counter variable, you'll see we have counter samples here. The second counter sample that we have is actually the processor utilization on my local machine. So what we could do here is add another, uh, let's do a, a div maybe, and say the processor utilization is X percent. And then we'll use the dash F operator to do .NET string formatting. And then we'll reference counter dot counter samples. Uh, so counter samples is the child property of this uh, counter set that I've got here. And then I'm going to index into that array of counter samples. So this item here would be index number zero. This would be index number one. So I'm going to index into there. And then that metric or that counter sample has a cooked value property. And then I will just cast that to an integer and wrap that in parentheses. So I'm just going to close, hit Control tilde to close the command window there. And you can see I'm basically creating a div saying the processor utilization is x, and I'm substituting this integer containing the CPU utilization for this zero placeholder right here. So let's go ahead and hit F5 one more time here. And I'll just Alt tab over and just do a manual page refresh, just do Control R. And you can see that I've just generated a static HTML file that contains my CPU utilization percentage. So if you wanted to dynamically refresh the content, you could potentially take this script that we created here and you could schedule this to run on a periodic interval using the Windows Task Scheduler. It's not the prettiest uh, method of, of generating dynamic content, but for something that's really just plain and simple, uh, where you just need to maybe generate a, a, a periodic report of maybe system performance or or generate some some uh, report containing some, some data from your business, uh, this just gives you a really quick way using PowerShell to spit that data out into a static page. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like on it if you did. If you want to see more content like this, uh, please hit the subscribe button so you get notified about new videos that I publish on this channel. And leave a comment to see what to let me know what other types of content you'd like to see on this channel in the future. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.